Hey guys, it's Emma here and welcome back to my channel and in today's video I will be testing out and reviewing the Nikon Z6. Boop, sorry. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, I am not a Nikon shooter, I am primarily Canon, although I do do some work with Sony, occasionally Fuji, and analog. So no real Nikon experience here. Every time I'm handed one, I, they always feel kind of back to front to me because I'm used to Canon. But since I did a video a few weeks ago where I tested out the Canon EOS R, which was their first full frame mirrorless camera, I thought I may as well do the same for Nikon. Also, my last tech video was just more of a voiceover, but I do want to kind of get more in depth with my tech videos. This isn't a tech review channel, but I want to do more of them. And so I feel like this is a better format. <laughs> so this is the Z6. Um, Nikon actually released their mirrorless cameras before Canon's. And in my honest opinion, I actually think it's the better out of the two. Um, but I actually got on surprisingly well with this one considering it's not Canon. So instead of me waffling on and on and on, I am gonna go through the specs. So Nikon have released two mirrorless cameras in this range, the Z7 and the Z6. In today's video, I will be reviewing the Z6. The body is in the style of a rangefinder camera. It is an FX format and has 24.5 megapixels, an ISO rating of 100 to 51,200. It has 273 autofocus points and is capable of up to 12 frames per second. It has a silent shooting mode and the tilting LCD monitor is also touchscreen. In terms of its video quality, the camera shoots full HD and 4K UHD. It also features Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and its storage type is XQD, although the camera does only have one card slot. Boring techie bit out of the way. Um, I'm just gonna go through the build. Um, first of all, it's super light. I found this really easy to carry around. It does have a single slot rather than a double slot, but it's XQD, so it kind of makes up for itself a little bit, but you know, it's just one of those things. The lens mount is also a Z mount. Um, I believe they are doing adapters so you can use the Nikon F mount lenses. I also quite like the screen. Obviously it isn't a flip screen, but it doesn't matter. I found that pretty handy. It's got a good build. Um, the controls are simple, easy to use. The one thing I did keep forgetting though is because it's uh, Nikon, I kept getting the aperture and shutter confused and um, I kept pressing the display button thinking I was recording a film when actually the record button is here. That's just because I'm used to um, the Canon 5D3. I have briefly used the Z7, although not for long, but I would still agree that this is the slightly better of Nikon's two mirrorless cameras. So with that boring portion out of the way, let's get to the more interesting portion of the video, which is how I got on with it and where I took it. I took this camera to Kenilworth Castle in Warwickshire. This is a beautiful, exquisite, ruined castle that was constructed during the Norman era and served all the way up to the Tudor era before falling into ruins in the mid 1600s. It's a really beautiful and historically rich place and I thought it'd be the perfect place to take this camera. Now I did test the photography side more in my Canon EOS R review as well as the video and I did take some photos with this camera but I was primarily interested in its video capabilities and its time lapses. So a bit of a slightly different review this time around. What I liked about this camera, first of all, other than the fact that it was super lightweight to carry, was just how easy it was to use. I could easily flick between the still image and video modes. I also found the tilt screen really handy, particularly when working with awkward angles. In the castle, there are a lot of balcony areas where you're walking around what's left of a tower and you can look straight down to see the base below. 
I was also really impressed by how quick and smooth the autofocus was. I was using continuous autofocus for the duration of my day out and I kept testing it by using something in the foreground, slowly transitioning to something in the background. The autofocus was super smooth but still had the speed and accuracy that I hoped for with those shots. Image stabilisation as well is great. I am a very animated <laughs> walker. I have a very bouncy walk. Think Pingu with springy shoes. But not with this camera. The steady shot was actually really, really good. As for the low light capabilities, I did do a few experiments kind of walking in and out of the dimly lit areas of the castle. As expected, the, the darker the areas got, the more the noise and grain really came out, but that is to be expected. However, when it came to actually picking up different objects in these dimly lit areas, the camera did its job exceptionally well. Like it was able to pick out the details in the brickwork, the staircases. Something else that I really benefited from was the touchscreen autofocus and shutter. So the camera has a setting where if you tap on the screen, it would help if I turned it on. If you tap on the screen, it'll take a picture. And this was so, so handy, especially when I was in like really kind of tight spaces or like, you know, I was kind of stooped down to get something and then if I wanted to try different areas of focus or angles, but without kind of having to move or change my position, I could just tap away and it worked really well. I did take a few pictures of some etchings in the walls, trying out different focus points and angles, all while using the touch shutter. I didn't really bother using the burst shooting. I just, I wasn't really photographing any action shots or wildlife, although I did photograph and film quite a few birds. There is a bird theme to this video. Unintentional, I promise. In the garden area of the castle, um, which is surprisingly gorgeous. There was this little uh, menagerie full of little birds and so I spent a considerable amount of time filming them and photographing them although eventually they all kind of flew away. Either I was disturbing them and they were very private or they just weren't Nikon fans. Considering these birds were moving around a lot and hopping about as little birds do, the camera kept really good track of them. I was surprised at how quick it kept focusing in on their faces. I guess the only negative aspects you could make about this camera are the fact that it only has one single card slot and there aren't that many native lenses for it yet. If you wanted to be really picky and say that the screen only tilts rather than like fully articulates and flips out, it's a nitpick. Um, also I have to, I've given the chance, okay, I have to clear something up about my Canon video while we're here. I, at first I did complain that it was like a tilt screen but it was fully articulating but I couldn't always get the right angles I wanted. That was more just a user thing like it was because I'm used to having the tilt, I'm used to having it here as opposed to like to the side of the camera so it felt a little bit lopsided, that's what I meant. And of course with most mirrorless cameras you will get the issue of the battery draining quicker than it would be a ordinary DSLR. The battery life, to be honest, didn't bother me too much. I wasn't, you know, using it excessively and I only did a couple of time lapses. The battery drains a little quicker with time lapses, um, but that's to be expected. And also I do, I do like a good time lapse. <laughs> I did test out a couple, it ended up being 10, 20 minutes per time lapse. So that equates to what, two to four seconds worth time lapse footage when it's sped up. So, you know, I was limited on my time there a bit. So I didn't get to really push its, its time lapse um, features. I really, really want to do some nighttime and sunset time lapses with this. So um, that's probably going to be a video at some point in the summer. 
Time lapse is a thing that I want to get into more anyway. It was kind of nice just to set the camera down and let it do its thing while I snacked. So overall, for somebody that hasn't really shot with Nikon before and usually feels a bit a fish out of water using them, I actually really loved using this camera. But I mean, I shoot with so many different brands. I'm kind of, what would you call me? Like photographically ambidextrous. You know, I had to really choose between the Nikon mirrorless or the Canon mirrorless. They're both great, but Nikon has just that bit more for me where I think I would given the choice of the two I would use this again sooner than I would the Canon. I would even go as far as to say that the usability and ergonomics of this are better than the Canons. Um, I had trouble kind of um, adjusting the aperture and things like that or like that you know that touch panel that I mentioned um, and things like that it just felt quite uh, alien <laughs> and it's funny how the Canon mirrorless felt more alien to a native Canon shooter than the Nikon mirrorless did. So yeah, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. And of course, um, if you've used the Nikon mirrorless cameras, or you have any, you know, interesting facts about them or anything that I've missed, because sometimes I do, I do get tech wrong. I'm sorry, I'm only human. <laughs> but yeah, feel free to comment below and let me know. So thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed, leave a like and hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell for notifications. My uploads are every Wednesday and Saturday. Um, some photographic content, some just general vlogs or travel, what have you. If you want to check me out and follow me on social media, you can. I have left the links in the description down below. But thanks again for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.